Welcome to the first of Groundforks Getting Started tutorials for the Jupiter's icy moon of Europa and we're playing Stationeers. Yes, Stationeers Survival Getting Started Guide for Europa. Note that this is Europa, not Europe. If you're looking for a Getting Started Guide for Europe, you might want to check the Travel or Lifestyle channel or I don't know what. However, in today's episode we'll be taking a look how to find a suitable base location, what to do and how to make sure that you survive the heat and basically get started. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so you spawn on Europa and the sun is coming out right next to your lander. So you want to be start looking for a suitable base location. Unlike Mars, Europa is very hilly and you want to be trying to find a base location on a big hill. I think this one actually will fit the bill. So let's go and grab our some base supplies, shall we? I'm opening the backpack with four and then I want to be placing the iron frames, uh, iron sheets, solid generator, arc furnace, and power controller. Right. I'm basically alt click dragging these items into my inventory and I want to be also taking the kit door and an additional battery cell large will actually do the trick. So. From the moment you spawn in, the clock is ticking, Europa, you will be facing two main challenges. One is uh, power problems, but that's all a consequence of extreme cold, minus 145 degrees centigrade. So you want to be starting to looking for a base location that's actually high up the hill. For some reasons due to the sun exposure and for others basically that you have a good view and that it's easy to find. Fortunately as you can tell you get spawned by uh, this big mountain so you want to be finding a sunny side of it and just start placing a small base foundation from the iron frames that we've got and I'm gonna start something like 3x3. Three three. Pretty much same as you do for Mars or any other planet. However this is where you're not building flat you want to be building an entrance and that's what i'm doing see this place in the middle is where i will be placing my door so now i want to basically drill into the mountain and make it airtight as soon as possible so that's one of the ways how you can actually quickly get warm and then your batteries will last longer also, I have one another tip is to turn off your light whenever you don't need it, uh, because, like I said, due to the extreme cold, battery life on Europa is extremely short. We're talking one day here, so be very careful. You want to basically get uh, dig a cave, get in, and uh, get warm as quickly as you can. That will ensure that your battery in your suit lasts much longer because uh, just imagine what the battery drain is if it's outside minus 140 degrees and the and the suit is trying to maintain a 25 degrees centigrade so yeah so as you can see we are digging in a cave and right now it's not airtight because of the frames that i've put but i'm gonna you know put enough frames to make it airtight you can also do this by iron walls, but I prefer frames because they seal up all the gapping holes nicer. Look at this. This will seal these holes pretty nice. And then we put another one here, another one here at the bottom. So as I said, three by three area, but sometimes I, you want to, might to even take it a little bit bigger, but I guess this will have to do for starters. I'm just trying to see if there's any place where it's not airtight yet. Yeah, here. This could be a good for expansion later on building area. Right. I think that's good enough. Now let's grab iron sheets. Hold on. Let's store my belt. 
and I, I want to be taking my tool belt. Like I said, alt click to six, alt click and drag to six. I'm just gonna dump the tape and the frames. Let me find my iron sheets and start welding. Yes, remember the clock is ticking. All right, now let's go to take iron sheets. And here's the kicker. This area inside, you want to hear, you want to basically weld twice because this needs to be airtight. Welding once is solid that you can stand on it. Welding twice is basically that you can, that it's airtight. It's not letting air in or out. So that's why it's important that this area is airtight. There we go. This area doesn't need to be airtight, so we can weld it just once. There we go. And I think I have to weld this guy over here. There we go. Oh, there are some frames that I forgot to weld. Yes. This guy. This guy. Probably on the other side too. I've welded those already. All right. There we go. And these ones you could, you could weld once, but uh, later on when you have the iron sheets, I recommend that you weld it twice just to basically make sure that there is nothing letting the cool air inside. There we go. All right, so this is basically our entrance. Now I want to be start placing the doors. Oh, not so the solid generator. <laughs> Sorry, they have similar models. Okay, right click. And you want to be placing the doors so that the sockets look towards inside of the door area. Both should be go on the inner side of the block where I just placed them. Now, in order to create them, you need a welding tool and I think you need Oh no, I need plastic sheets. Oopsie. Okay, I guess I have to do another trip to the lander then. Let's put this and let's go rush down to the lander. While we're passing by, there are some mineable uh, minerals, which we will for sure need. Maybe a simpler way would be if you just want to do, take... Oh, where's my lander? Oh, there it is. Maybe the simpler solution would be basically to take the kit locker. There is a kit locker inside and then just dump the things that you'd need up there. Now, um, actually wait, this is where the kit locker should be. Yeah, kit locker, thank you. And now where are the rest of the stuff that I need? I could use handheld tablet no oh there they are plastic sheets there we go plastic sheets and glass sheets I need all right and glass sheets good and I could be taking the auto lathe yes I'll need it all right close it up is there anything else that I could take battery charger small Sensors, yeah, I'll need all of those. When you hear this washing sound, that usually means that the the night is near and the sun is almost setting. So, yeah, it would be a good idea that we go and rush up to build our base. Yeah. All right, here we are. So, I'm actually just gonna dump the auto lathe here. And let's go weld up. Oh, I can actually put the locker here so I can dump all my stuff here. Yeah, and to build this large locker, you need two locker kits, just so you know. You get them on your lander, by the way. And then you can easily put things inside. So that every time you go to the lander, you bring something more. So let me just dump stuff that I have in my inventory. It will make things easier to build, trust me. 
flares, power controller, and the battery. There we go. Now let's weld up the entrance. I need plastic sheets for that. And those are... Okay, I'm blind apparently. Oh, there they are. Right. Welding torch. Turn it on and weld it up. And then you need a crowbar and glass sheets to weld it up completely. You can see the air particles coming out. That means it's not yet airtight. Okie doke. There we go. See? Nice and airtight. And the reason why you want air tightness is not because of the pressure, but because of the heat. And here's another good starting tip. You want to be using the flares to heat up the area because you have a lot of them and you don't know to be, or at least I don't know what to do with them in the beginning, but here they turn out to be a quite good source of heat. And as you will, as you will be able to tell, as you can see, the minus 142 degrees is already starting to warm up. And we're gonna use this time to put the area power control down because that's another of the priorities. Set up a work area that we can create more stuff. That's another one of our priorities for today. All right. Uh, oh, I need to open you with a crowbar. Hold on. You wait here. Where's my crowbar? There it is. Open it up. Battery. We'll flip it on. Battery put here. Come on. There we go. So the battery source is here and I, now I want to be starting to do my production line. I want to be able to smelt um, ores. And this is basically the arc furnace, which will, will make it possible. I'm gonna place it here. You don't need to worry about your initial setup or how it will look like. You're gonna remodel it anyway, 10 times over by the time you will be happy with it. So don't give it too much attention. Right, and now I want to be placing my solid generator somewhere close. Maybe I do another iron frame here so I have enough buildable area. See, power low. I told you, battery, battery life here, it's incredible. And that's one of the reasons why I was in a rush to actually start heating up, the, seal the area and heat up the area. And you may ask, okay, but I only need a single door ground forks. No, you actually need a double door because if you open up the single door, the whole uh, warmed air that you will have lovingly warmed up now will just go out. So, and you don't want to do that. Right, so uh, I'm gonna place the solid generator quite close to the power control. I just want to be aligning the ports and you can see this is a power port and it will be aligned to the with the cable. We'll connect it directly to the power supply. There we go. Another tip, guys, if you press C, uh, it will the cable will orient to use the maximum amount of existing connections. So, yeah, it's very handy. Now I want to be putting the auto lathe somewhere around here, ish, and I want to be constructing it. So I need welding torch and I have two iron sheets. There we go. Then the next step is cable. And then you need welding torch and two plastic sheets to wrap it up. Come on and there we go. And then we need a screwdriver to fix it up to this up to snuff. Right. So we want to cable it up so that it can be used. And look at the temperature, guys. We're at minus 94 degrees, powered by flares alone. Now, that if that's not the perfect use of flares, then I don't know what is. Okay, we're just cabling it up. There we go. Okay, now you turn like this and... I don't need the data port on the auto lathe yet, so I'm just gonna be sparse on the cable. 
Okay, we should be able now to turn off both on both the arc furnace and the auto lathe. We can actually return this and I think it, this would be a good enough source. Is that where, where it's leaking air? No, it's not. All right, then to be honest, guys, I'm pretty happy with uh, what we've done today. I think in the next uh, episode we will be setting up the power controller. Thank you very much for watching. Like if you like the episode, hit subscribe, there will be more of these planetary start our guides and I'll see you in the next one. This is Gromforks signing off.